What's going on guys, this is Rob, and if you're enjoying the content that I'm uploading onto my channel, then feel free to subscribe, and you can also offer suggestions on topics and characters and storylines and whatnot that we can have discussions on uh, later on in this channel. Okay, so a little while ago, I made a video, or at least a series of videos, on the Xavier Protocols. And for those of you guys who don't know, the Xavier Protocols were basically uh, concepts by Charles Xavier that detailed how to defeat, and if necessary, kill different members of the mutant community, some of whom were X-Men, some of whom were villains of the X-Men. In one of those videos, I addressed the healing factor of Wolverine. But the issue here is that with regards to the Xavier Protocol, as far as Charles Xavier was concerned, the only surefire way to kill Wolverine was to cut his head off and separate his head from his body. But that did very little to answer the question, what are all the different ways you can kill Wolverine? It was like, hey, here's a way you can kill Wolverine. <laughs> But if, 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 if people want to know how to kill Wolverine, like, like they want a lot of ways. People are like, I want to know all the ways that Wolverine can be killed. So the beauty of this is that in 2008, there was a story written by Chris Yost called Killing Made Simple. And what this is, is basically a story where Wolverine runs over all the ways that he can be killed, at least all the ways that he knows that he can be killed. Now, the cool thing about this, or at least one thing to keep in mind, is this story is, is short, sweet, and to the point. I mean, it's really kind of like a coming of age for a girl named uh, Hope Abbott. And we'll get into that, you know, as we go through this story. Um, but it's really not designed to be this great, big, huge, grandiose thing. It's a quick little one-off. It's like 15 pages long, but it's kind of a cool little story in terms of what we get with regards to her character as well as Wolverine running over the ways that he can die. So uh, with regards to this story, this takes place after the events of House of M and Decimation. Real quick, uh, House of M was basically Marvel reducing their mutant population by having the Scarlet Witch warp reality set things back. But when she did, she said no more mutants. And basically the entire mutant population was reduced down to 198 to make it more manageable. In response to this, there were only about 27 mutants who were students that could basically learn at the Xavier Institute. This was compounded by the fact that after the events of Secret Invasion, which I have a video on that you're welcome to check out, Tony Stark was kicked out as director of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Norman Osborn was put in his place. But Norman Osborn had a desire to basically take over the country, and so in response, the X-Men left the Xavier Institute, shut it down, and moved to an island off the coast of San Francisco, dubbing it Utopia. And so what this did is it basically forced the X-Men to send all the other, uh, all the students, all 27 students, back home. And that's where this story picks up from. So, uh, the cool thing about this is that it initially starts out with Wolverine, talking over one of the ways that he can die. And one of the things that he says is metal poisoning. Now, this is something that I want to run over here real quick because one of the questions, that one of the other questions a lot of people have is why is it that Wolverine ages in Marvel Comics? Okay, so there are a couple reasons for this. The first is the fact that Wolverine's healing factor is rooted in biology. You know, Wolverine's healing factor is just like your ability to heal. If you cut yourself at five years old, you'll heal a lot faster than if you cut yourself at 95 years old. With Wolverine, it's the same way, except it's more advanced. So its healing abilities allow him to live a whole lot longer. The problem with this is that he has adamantium bonded to his skeleton. His adamantium is constantly poisoning his body. And so it's like if I gave you a hammer and I said, I want you to start hitting this block of wood, you can start out really, really strong and you can just beat the heck out of that block of wood. But a time will come when your arm will tire out and you won't be able to lift it anymore. That's Wolverine's healing factor. Wolverine's healing factor is constantly fighting off the adamantium poisoning. And the more it does that, the more it begins to weaken, the weaker his healing factor becomes. The weaker it becomes, the older he gets, the less uh, the less of an impact it has on keeping him younger. So it's one of those weird situations. But the fact remains here that he says if you were to negate his healing factor, then he would basically just die of metal poisoning. The adamantium poisoning would just permeate throughout his body, and that would be it. It would just it would it would guarantee his death. Now, with regards to this story, what this does is this backs up a bit, and it basically starts, or at least it transitions to how it was that Wolverine and uh, and Hope were captured. But along the way, he continues to sort of run over these different ideas on uh, on how it is. That he can be killed. One of the things that he tells us is that there is a character by the name of Nanny and another character by the name of Orphan Maker. Now, these characters date all the way back to like 1988. I want to say X Factor number 30, I think it was. They've been around for a really long time. But Nanny was a character who was introduced to Marvel Comics for the purpose of basically kidnapping mutant children and then raising them as her own. Now, her motivations were weird. She basically believed that human parents of mutant kids were inept. They couldn't be responsible parents, especially if they were dropping their kids off at the Xavier Institute. They were effectively abandoning them. And so 
because of this, she started kidnapping kids. Now, of course, she was run into by X Factor and the X Men constantly, and they face off against her. They rescue the kids. You know, it was pretty part and parcel and pretty straightforward to the point. But from here, with Wolverine tracking down Hope Abbott and eventually finding her back at her home alongside uh, Nanny and uh, Orphan Maker trying to attack them, one of the things that he does is he transitions to another way in which he can die, where he talks about using a sword that can negate his healing factor and that can kill him. Now, with regards to this particular instance, Wolverine references his head being cut off. Now, under normal circumstances, we would say that's not possible. Wolverine has an adamantium skeleton. There's no possible way to cut his head off. Actually, there is. In Avengers number three, issue number 22 from 1999, the Avengers faced off against Ultron. And at this point in his history, Ultron had an adamantium skeleton, adamantium shell, whatever you want to call it. He basically had an adamantium body. Uh, he was defeated using a combination of anti-metal or Antarctic vibranium, as well as uh, I think the Avengers just beating the hell out of him. But the idea was that Antarctic vibranium basically has anti-metal properties. And what that means is that if you have an anti-metal sword, or if you have an, an Arctic vi uh, Antarctic vibranium sword and you run up on any kind of a metal, it'll cut through it. And the reason why is because Antarctic vibranium breaks metals down on the molecular level. And that's exactly what would happen with, uh, with, with adamantium. Adamantium is extremely durable and it's almost impossible to destroy if you're Thor beating on it with a hammer. But if you have anti-metal, then you can literally just cut through it like a knife through butter because it'll break adamantium apart on the molecular level. And so again, that's one of the reasons or one of the ways in which you could be decapitated. The other half of this is that there are any kind of magic, I mean, there's all kinds of different magic out there, magic that can negate powers, all different kinds of things. But something else that can shut off Wolverine's healing factor is called the Muramasa Blade. Now, the Muramasa Blade was a sword that was created by a guy named Muramasa, and it was done for Wolverine at the request of Wolverine. And the reason why was because Logan's wife, Itsu, had been killed. And what he wanted was to basically go on a rampage of destruction, killing anybody that had anything to do with his wife's death. But the problem is that Wolverine knew along the journey he would run into people who inevitably had healing factors just like his. And so what he wanted was a sword that could shut down the healing factors of those individuals and allow Wolverine to kill them. And so Muramasa took a shard of Wolverine's soul or took a portion of his soul, put it inside the sword and basically said, if you run up on God with this sword, you can stab him and God will die. And so that was the idea that as long as Wolverine had this sword, he could stab anybody with a Muramasa blade. It would shut off their healing factor temporarily and then he could kill them using any number of conventional means. But he also gave the sword to Cyclops at one point and told Cyclops, this is the only way that I can die. So uh, that's basically one of the ways in which you can shut it off is you're in the, uh, using the Muramasa blade. I almost said you're uh, urinating the Muramasa blade, using the Muramasa blade. But again, this just kind of fast forwards a bit and it picks up with uh, with Nanny and, uh, and Orphan Maker grabbing Hope Abbott and grabbing Wolverine. Now, in the midst of this whole attempt or this whole, uh, this effort by Wolverine to basically stave off against Orphan Maker and try to keep Hope Abbott safe, he kind of references back to a character named Nimrod. And this is another way to kill him. Uh, during the events of Days of Future Past, one of the big questions that people had is where Wolverine was blasted by a sentinel and he was incinerated, wouldn't he just heal it? Just because of the fact that his skeleton basically encased his bones, which means that he would have bone marrow. Wolverine basically is going through here and saying that would not be the case. In the instance of Nimrod, Nimrod was the eventuality of Days of Future Past. That is to say, where Days of Future Past focused on the idea that sentinels became self-aware, they began duplicating themselves, they took over the entirety of North America, they enslaved both humans and mutants, and looked to take over the entirety of the world, uh, that eventually the sentinels uh, created Nimrod as the perfect sentinel. Now this leads into the Days of Future Present and all kinds of weird stuff, but Nimrod, at least according to the different stories that we've seen him in, he is wildly powerful in terms of his ability, shape-shifting, all different kinds of stuff, but Wolverine basically says with the kind of energy projection abilities that Nimrod has, if Wolverine's blasted with a powerful enough beam of energy, it would incinerate the skin from his bones and there would be no coming back from that. There'd be no way for him to come back. And so from here, it basically picks up with uh, with Wolverine and with, uh, with Hannah Abbott being taken by Nanny and Orphan Maker. And of course, the idea is that initially Orphan Maker wants to kill Wolverine, but Nanny says, no, 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 don't do that. We can use him for our own purpose. Now, this would likely, you know, involve brainwashing of some capacity, but we kind of wrap back around to the current moment with regards to Wolverine talking to Hope. And Hope is basically kind of like, you know, you're an X-Man, you're one of the greatest of the X-Men, you know, how can you really be killed? You're supposed to be indestructible, you have a healing factor. And this is when Wolverine starts to run over kind of like a quick list of all the ways that he can be killed. The first thing he runs over is the sun. And this is basically the same thing as being blasted by energy from Nimrod, right? I mean, you know, adamantium would easily be able to withstand the temperature of the sun. Remember, once adamantium hardens, it cannot be turned back into a liquid form again. And so because of this, Wolverine could just be thrown into the sun and he would just be incinerated down to the skeleton. And then of course, he would just be sitting in the heart of a gaseous star. So there'd really be no way to, to bring him out of that. But what he also says is there are people that can, um, that can warp reality, that can basically tear him apart 
out from the inside out. Now, uh, one thing that I also want to focus on here is someone like Molecule Man Owen Reese. As we know, Molecule Man Owen Reese has the ability to manipulate matter on the molecular level. So he basically controls all things in existence, which is what made him such a wildly powerful being in the first place. One of the most powerful beings in existence in, uh, in Marvel Comics. But the idea is that because adamantium is an object and because it's composed of atoms, which make up molecules, then it would be virtually no task for uh, Owen Reese to walk up to Wolverine, break his adamantium down on the molecular level, and then extract it from Wolverine harmlessly. I mean, that would be just one way to get rid of his adamantium, you know, and from there, I mean, you could have him just kind of phase him out of existence. You could shoot Wolverine in any, you know, with any kind of a weapon. There's a lot of different ways to kill him. If you had someone that could warp reality like that, either that, or they could just kind of twist him inside out and turn him into a liquid state, do all kinds of, uh, of crazy things with him. But then he also references a guy named Strife, of course, being the evil clone of Cable. That gets into a whole other discussion that we're not going to have. But uh, you could basically have someone travel back in time and keep Wolverine from ever having been born in the first place. From here, he starts to get into simpler things. You know, for example, you could basically attach him to a giant magnet because of his adamantium skeleton. Uh, he would be stuck to this magnet. You could just drop the magnet to the bottom of the ocean. I mean, there's all different kinds of ways in which he could be killed. Now, what he does is he holds what's what's amount what amounts to the nastiest way to die to the very end. And what he does is he tells Hope that Nanny's going to be coming in there and Nanny is going to de-age Wolverine, meaning she's going to reduce him back down to a child. But he says his adamantium skeleton is completely indestructible. And so the adamantium will stay, but his physical bones under the adamantium, his skin, the whole nine yards, it'll all just start shrinking down in size. And so what'll happen is the adamantium template, so to speak, would just explode out of his body. Now he says, even if that didn't happen, even if, you know, well, I mean, I assume it would, but even if you were to, you know, were to heal from that entire experience, then it would still be a gruesome process because his body would heal around this adamantium skeleton. It'd be, it'd be messed up. Like it'd be really, really, really bad. Now, the reason for Wolverine giving that little bit of an explanation to her and really just kind of running over all these different ways to die is because he's like, that's what's going to happen if you don't use your powers and get us out of here. Now, that's really a rough lesson. Like that's really a bad way to teach somebody a lesson. It's actually pretty screwed up, but with the character of Trance, and I wanted to wait until this point to kind of run over this, with the character of Hope Abbott, she went by the name of Trance. And her idea was that she could enter like an astral projection form. She could fly, she could do different things, but she had never really had any trust in herself in terms of her abilities. And so what happens is, is Chris Yoss kind of wraps this up super fast in the sense that she's like, well, I mean, I don't want to see you die in some extremely gruesome way. And I certainly don't want to be a slave to some crazy robot chick. So she basically kind of uses her abilities and, and essentially gets Wolverine out of there, you know, or at least uh, frees Wolverine. And then he pops his claws and just starts tearing through Orphan Maker and Nanny. And, and that's really it. I mean, they, they get, you know, they wrap things up pretty darn quick. There's a couple instances where, you know, I guess Hope's kind of taken by surprise on what it is that he does, but Wolverine doesn't really go over any other way for him to be killed. That's really about it. And so, of course, you know, with uh, Orphan Maker defeated, with Nanny kind of left in shambles, he grabs Hope and they basically make it out of there. And, and that's pretty much where the story wraps up. But I thought it was pretty cool to, to, you know, do this little comic where Wolverine runs over all the ways that he can die. Uh, it's really interesting. But keep in mind, these are all the ways that Wolverine knows to die according to him. It does not mean those are all the ways that Wolverine can die in their entirety. They may just be like imaginative ways that no one's ever bothered to think up yet. So my challenge to you guys is to leave a comment down below and let me know of a way that you think that you could kill Wolverine, because I'm kind of curious uh, all the ways that you think he could die. I think it'd be interesting to see some of the uh, creative things that you all come up with. But if you're new here to Comments Explain, be sure to hit the sub button and become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like and yeah, I will catch you all later. Peace.